What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Take Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Jackson Burleson, of course. Um, welcome to 2023. Uh, hope you guys had a great new year, had a happy holidays, good Christmas and everything. Um, I really wish uh, all y'all the best for 2023 and make sure to stay positive and go after your dreams as I am. Um, but let's go ahead and before we get into this pod, excuse my voice. I'm a little bit under the weather right now. Uh, I've been sick for the past couple of days, so excuse my voice if it kind of sounds sick to you. I'm a little under the weather. But make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, like this video. I would really appreciate that. And then comment what you guys think about my takes as well. Uh, I want to know what you guys think so we can have a little bit of debates in the comment sections. And then share the video as well. I want everyone to see my takes on sports so make sure to share this video with as many people as you can and then the spotify version will be available in the description so click the link in the description for that and then the take.sport.blog will also be in the description as well that's where i write all my sports articles uh, my last one was about jake paul going to the pfl which is his move to the mma which is kind of crazy but make sure to go read that article link in the description to go read some of my articles and then prayers up for damar hamlin as well i really hope he's making a full recovery and is getting back to close as he can get to 100 percent right now I, i'm really hoping he gets back to where he was I, i'm i'm praying for him as everyone else is in the sports community but let's go ahead and get into this pod here so um the national championship between TCU and Georgia is going to be underway Monday, January 9th. This is going to be a game, you guys. This is going to be a game of the year. I just I can't believe TCU is in this position right now. The fact that they dominated Michigan as bad as they did is honestly <clears throat> is honestly unfathomable to think about because I had Michigan win in that game. I really did. I had Michigan, you know, coming out on top and defeating the Horn Frogs. But the Horn Frogs looked so good in that game. They were playing so well defensively. They looked very confident on the offensive end. Max Duggan, you guys, he is a very underrated quarterback and I think he should get a lot more respect heading into this 2023 draft because he can do it all. I mean, he can run the football. He can throw the football outside the pocket accurately. He's good at making reads. I mean, he's a very underrated player, and he's been preparing all season long to be the best, and he's done that. He's overcame adversity in the Big 12 championship, and he's bounced back. Seeing guys do that really makes me look at them differently for the NFL because they have characteristics of a winner but characteristics of a hard worker that can get over anything and still be successful. I mean, I think he should be at least a second round pick or a late first rounder, but he is a very underrated player. And I just love what Max Duggan brings to the table. He is a great leader. Number one, he literally is a big quarterback. He has the size. He has the strength. He's got the arm talent. He's got all the intangibles to be developed into a good quarterback. If he goes to the NFL and a team really sits down and is like, okay, we can develop this kid. We can really do a lot with him. He can go really far in the NFL. That's my kind of take on Max Duggan. Uh, excuse me, you guys, for my voice again. I'm really trying to do the best I can with my voice. I know it's kind of, you know, sucks right now, but I'm doing the best I can. <clears throat> But it's not just Max Duggan that has this TCU Horn Frogs team successful. Quentin Johnson is one of the best receivers in the college football. Like, he makes some insane acrobatic catches. He's always open, and he's super fast. I mean, it's hard for a lot of corners to cover him. And I really applaud this TCU team because Michigan has one of the best defenses in the country. I mean, they literally have been holding teams to almost no points. I mean... The only team that kind of scored points on them this year was Ohio State when they scored 23, but they still won that game by 20, which kind of we'll get into Georgia and Ohio State in a second, and I'll kind of compare these two games. But, I mean, Michigan, I thought they were going to do better. Um, they still played well. It's just they didn't play as good as they should have 
in the beginning of the game. They were kind of sloppy to start off the game, which led TCU to getting a 21 to 3 lead at the beginning of the game. I mean, you can't just take your foot off the gas pedal if you're Michigan. They were going three and out multiple times. They were punting the football. They were kicking a lot of field goals to start the second half, the first half, excuse me. And J.J. McCarthy wasn't being aggressive with the football, and they weren't able to get the run game going. And the run game for Michigan, that is their strong suit. That is what made them so successful all season long was their run game. Their run game with Edwards. I mean, Edwards is a great running back, but he was shut down multiple occasions by this TCU defense who had some swagger to them. I mean, they were playing insanely well. They were making some tackles in the backfield. They were getting after the quarterback. They were turning the ball over. I mean, they were doing everything you could ask this team to do. That was the best game TCU's defense has had all season long. Even though they gave up 45 points, that was the best game they had all season long. And I really think TCU moving forward will bring that momentum into the Michigan game that they had into this game against Georgia because now they – are thinking to themselves, we're not scared of any defense at all. We're not scared of any offense at all. Because Michigan has one of the best offenses in the country, but so does Georgia. I mean, Georgia has one of the best offenses in the country. Stenson Bennett is one of the best players in the nation. I mean, he's a very experienced quarterback. He knows how to get the job done. We saw that last year. Um, And they got that two tight end package with Washington and Brock Bowers. I mean, they're a very dangerous team. I mean, they're no cakewalk, but... Georgia did struggle against Ohio State, who Michigan did blow out. That's the thing I'm kind of raising my eyebrows about, is that Georgia was down by 11 points at one point in this game, and it looked like Ohio State was going to run away with it. And C.J. Stroud, you guys, he is the number one pick in this draft. I don't care. I don't care what people say about Bryce Young. He is the number one overall pick in this draft. Just the throws he was making in the pocket, he was making the correct reads, taking his time, throwing the ball accurately. He's the most accurate quarterback I have seen in a long time come out of college. He really is. He's just so patient in the pocket. He doesn't force anything. This is the this is the game he needed to have to Make sure NFL scouts know I'm the best player in this draft. And he did that. And I'm very confident he will be picked first overall. And But it wasn't just that in this game. C.J. Stroud, he was making plays with his legs. He was very dangerous in that area as well. And him outside the pocket. He was making some marvelous throws outside the pocket. And Marvin, jo- Marvin Harrison Jr., you guys, that player is special. He is a special talent. He's one of the best receivers coming into this NFL draft. He is one of the best receivers I've seen. He makes so many plays on the ball. It's like unbelievable. Like if like CJ Stroud, I know that Marvin Harrison got decked on this play, but like the fact that CJ Stroud could even throw this ball to Marvin Harrison in the back of the end zone where he was completely covered and Marvin Harrison still had the ability to get the football and possibly make a play on it was absolutely next-level stuff. I mean, that was honestly the best throw of C.J. Stroud's career, and he wasn't even trying to make a good throw. He was trying to throw it away in the back of the end zone, which is unfathomable. Like, that's that's crazy. Like, the clip will be on the screen when I'm talking about this, but this, so you guys can just see how amazing that play was. But the hit that Marvin Harrison took, I mean, that was I, that was scary. Out, but that was a scary hit, a and the, it just puts into perspective, you guys. Like, Bullard. everyone knows the that these football in. players are risking their the lives the to play this pad. game. They understand Terry that the it's a high we'll cost to get this dream, you guys. Was... Like, football is not an easy game to play. It's not. It's very physical and it's very violent, and I find it very entertaining, as everyone else does. But to understand. What these guys go through on a day-to-day basis, you know, after the game, they're probably in so much pain. Um, It's just a lot of things that you got to really think about. I mean, these people are human beings. I mean, human beings aren't necessarily designed to get hit like that all the time. I mean, think about this. Like, this stuff really didn't kind of hit me until DeMar Hamlin. I'm just watching the game, and I'm just like, oh, my God. He just, and thank God he's all right. Because, like, I really was, I was like, are you, 
I was like thinking the worst scenario here. I was like, this guy could possibly lose his life over the game he loves when he's 24 years old, four years younger than me. He's four years. I'm four years younger than him. You guys that just put that into perspective. You guys are 20 years old, 21 years old watching this podcast. I just want you guys to appreciate every single moment you guys have in your life. I know I'm kind of getting off topic from college football, but I just want you guys to appreciate every moment you guys have. Cause I mean, even for me, like, I don't know if this is going to be my last podcast or not. So if you keep going and keep striving to be great and be the best version of yourself, as long as you have on this planet, you will do great things. And that's what I'm trying to do with my career as a whole. I'm trying to do the best I can. And that's all you can really ask for for people. Just do your best. And if you do your best and you put your best foot forward, you will get results. And that's people get discouraged about that because, you know, they don't see results right away. You know, I, I'm not seeing results right away and I'm still going. I'm still keeping my head down. I'm still keeping my eye on the prize. I'm still going, you know, so but I, I'm sorry I get a little off topic there. But I mean, you just got to appreciate everything you guys have. And, you know, that hit Marvin Harrison had was a very deadly hit. But get back into the Ohio State game. At the end of that game, I mean, Georgia, they rattled, they rallied back and, you know, struggled through adversity. And, I mean, that's why I'm kind of having question marks about Georgia because they struggle with Ohio State, who doesn't have a great defense, in my opinion. They struggle in the secondary. They're very weak in that area. They weren't great at getting to the passer. But Ohio State, they had a chance to win that game. They missed a field goal that they probably should have made. He absolutely shanked it. I don't know how he missed it, but they should have. he should have made it. He should have made it. And Georgia got lucky, you guys. They got awfully lucky. They got lucky, which is why my prediction for TCU versus Georgia is TCU is going to win this game and become national champions of the college football world. That is going to happen. 100%. I just think TCU is more confident. They have more to prove. Now, I'm not saying Georgia doesn't have anything to prove. They do. They have to go back-to-back -back champions to solidify themselves as the SEC powerhouse over Alabama. But TCU has a lot more to prove because a Big 12 team has not won a college football championship. It hasn't happened yet. It hasn't. Um, and they got a lot to prove. They weren't that good at the beginning of the year. They weren't ranked. They were barely beating teams that they should have been blowing out. But now they're here. Now they're here. And this is a big game for Max Duggan and Stenson Bennett as well for these NFL scouts. Depending on how those guys play is really going to depend on where they get drafted. I mean, that's just my personal opinion on this. Um, <clears throat> TCU, I think they're going to play better defensively. I think they're going to show off their offensive skill set. I just think they're the better football team here. I really do. Uh, it's just it's just gonna happen. They're gonna TCU is gonna outcoach Georgia. Kirby Smart's gonna get outcoached. That's what I think is gonna happen. I think TC, I think Max Duggan balling out against this Georgia defense is gonna raise his draft stock even higher because Georgia's the best defense in the country. They have been all season long. I mean, you saw when they played number one Tennessee, they absolutely shut him down. They shut down the best offense in college football. But I don't think they're going to do the same thing here. I really don't. But outside of the college football playoff and, you know, all the other games, there has been a lot of talk about Alabama. Should they have been in? Should they have not been in? Now, I'm going to stick with, I'm going to stick with my gut here. I don't think they should have been in. No. They didn't beat the teams they should have during the regular season. So why should they be in the playoff? They had two losses. Now, the argument that people are making, Kansas State, they beat Kansas State. Alabama beat Kansas State in their bowl game. Who beat TCU. Who's the only team to beat TCU. But that was before we knew that. Like, you can't sit here and say that, oh, Alabama's going to be matched up with Kansas State. Now, if they played the regular season, that'd be a different story. That'd have a little more weight to it. But they didn't play during the regular season. So it's a little harder to judge that. 
it's kind of hard. You're you're like juggling around. Like uh, there were, I thought at the beginning that Alabama should have been in over TCU because I think Alabama had a better team, and I still think they are a little bit better. But I mean TCU after watching them play against Michigan. I'm glad they put TCU in because they are the better football team. They are. That's a fact. But Alabama, they were definitely into discussion as a two-loss team. And it's kind of crazy that you can even talk about a two-loss team even being in the college football playoff. It's honestly kind of absurd if you think about that. That's how good Alabama is. They still got Bryce Young, who's a former Heisman candidate and a former Heisman Trophy winner. Um, I mean, there's just a lot of teams that – you know, could have been in. But I think the committee made the right decision there, uh, putting Ohio State in and putting TCU in and not moving them. TCU was at three, and they stayed at three. So, but next year, next year is going to be very interesting. It's going to be interesting. You got the 12-team college football playoff. Holy cow, you guys. And watching... <clears throat> Watching the Tulane USC game makes me like think about Tulane could be in that conversation to be in the playoff next season. If they go undefeated and they do what they're supposed to do next year, they take care of business, they're going to be in. They're going to be in. And it's going to make a lot of opportunity for all these low level Division I teams. Because some of these low-level Division One teams wouldn't ever get a chance to win a national title. Now, that opens the door up for all kinds of possibilities. All kinds. And you're going to have some teams in the SEC with possibly two, three losses. Because you know the committee loves their SEC teams. They love them. Because, look at it this way. If the college football playoff... Could be all SEC, they would do that. But since they can't with all these other conferences, it's impossible. But look at this. If there was a 12-team college football playoff this year, there would have been so many different possibilities this year. I mean, you you just look at it. First of all, you got the first four with Georgia, Michigan, TCU, and Ohio State. And then at number five, you got Alabama, TC, or excuse me, Tennessee, Clemson, Utah, Kansas State, USC, Penn State, and then Washington, who has one of the best quarterbacks in the country and Penix Jr. But that makes a very interesting college football playoff. And there's an argument that Florida State at 13 could be in. Right there at that spot. And let's talk about Florida State for a second. Florida State, next year, their ceiling is a college football playoff berth. (coughs) You guys, if Florida State does not make the college football playoff next year, Mike Norvell needs to be out as head coach of the Florida State Seminoles. I was at the Cheez-It Bowl, and my God, those play calls were horrendous. Running the football, not in the correct situation, not passing it to Johnny Wilson, who, by the way, is a 6'7 receiver, 235 pounds, and he's a sophomore. Next year, he's going to be the best player in college football. No defense in the country is going to be able to stop that man. No defense. No one. But you got to understand, when you have a player like that, and you've got single coverage, no safeties over the top, I wrote an article about this as well. Go check it out, the take.support.blog. But you leave a guy wide open, one-on-one coverage, on a corner that's 5'11", and he's sick foot seven no safeties over the top and you don't throw it his direction you just go nuts you go nuts you're like what are you doing what kind of are you looking at the defense 
Are you reading the defense? Are you really reading the defense? Are you really thinking about it? Because you can't just sit there and not acknowledge that. I don't know if Mike Novell's blind, but like he didn't see it ever. When we throw it to him, we'd have he'd have two safeties over the top on the defense. Like why? Why are you throwing it to him then? Throw it to him when you got the most opportunistic matchup. You could take advantage. Now I do like the Florida State run game. I'm not gonna lie, they have a good run game. But getting the football in the red zone when you pass the football, that's how you get there. And then you run it four plays in a row. You go for it on fourth down and you run it. You just like it just it just makes you explode in anger. Like that's how it was. We won. I'm a Florida State fan. Florida State won the game against Oklahoma by three points. Three points against a team that is trash. 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 That is underperforming. Underperforming. I swear. We have the team. Our defensive line needs a lot of work, though. We could not get to the quarterback at all in that game. Especially against mobile quarterbacks, forget it. Forget it. We're not doing anything. And we only we would have multiple plays where we'd only rush three guys. Why? Why? Blitz the guy. Put a spy on him. We didn't put a spy on him once. Once. And he was running outside the pocket all day. Running with the football all day. We could not stop the run either. Those running backs were having their way. They were getting seven, eight-yard carries. Time and time out. (sighs) Florida State, you guys got to do something next year. Because I expect you guys to be one of the best teams in the country. Simple as that. Next season, it's your time. But this is time out. For the Take Podcast here. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, I really enjoy making these. I love them, honestly. Um, excuse my voice once again. I know it's a little scratchy. I know it's you know not 100% yet. But you know, hopefully it's getting better. Um, but make sure to subscribe to the channel, you guys. Um, I really appreciate uh, the support. And then uh, like the video and support as well. Um, just so I know you guys like these podcast episodes and then, uh, comment what you guys think about my takes. Once again, uh, comment what you guys think about all the takes I made about college football in this podcast. Um, and then share the video, share it with everyone you can, uh, make sure everyone knows about the take podcast and then, uh, check out the Spotify version. Uh, it'll be in the bio or description. Um, so make sure to go check that out. And then the take.sport.blog will be in the description as well. Um, So make sure to uh, go check that out in the description. Um, Go check out my FSU article that I was kind of referencing a little bit. Um, And then check out my social medias. I'm popping up on the screen. I know I didn't say go follow them at the beginning of this podcast. But go ahead and go follow them. They're going to be in the description. So you do not miss out on any more episodes. But I am your host, Jackson Burleson. And this has been another episode of the Take Podcast.